So today I was chasing an issue and found a nozzle leak. Well, let's fix that. Section 3.2 of Luke's Guide will help us with this issue. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So I was chasing an issue where the heat sock would not stay seated on the heat block. When I actually took the heat sock off, I realized that the grub screw had fallen out of the heat block, as you can see here, and was stuck between the heat sock and the block. But then I noticed there's filament getting through the threads above the heat block on the throat, and that's not good. So let's walk through how to fix that. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and remove the fans and everything around the hot end, and we're going to set that off to the side now. Okay, so we want to make sure the hot end is up to temperature. I did about 220 degrees uh, is where I was. And what we're going to do first is clean off the nozzle here. So I just want to get all the stuff as much as I can off the nozzle, and I use a brush like that. Just a little uh, scrub brush, and it's not easy with one arm <laughs> trying to brush this. But we're going to get it cleaned off there, and there we go, nice and clean. So once we're cleaned up, what we want to do is go ahead and take our nozzle off. We're going to use the pliers, and we're going to always grip the heat block like that. And then you want to use the wrench that came with the set, or I like a six millimeter socket. And that will take the nozzle right off. I'm going to have my wife hold this and remove it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so my wife loosened it for me. So what I want to do is take the nozzle out. I'm going to use my six millimeter uh, socket and just unscrew it. Be careful, it is going to be hot and it will heat up the socket. But once it's out, uh, you can set it aside and move on to the next step. So once the nozzle is removed, we want to go ahead and remove the Bowden coupler and the Bowden tube from the top of the cooling block. So I'm going to go ahead and use the wrench that came with the set and we're going to loosen it uh, now. There we go. And go ahead and spin the rest of that out. When you're done with it, you can just put it uh, hang it around the back, it should be fine. Just like that. So then I'm going to get the small Allen wrench uh, like this, and we're going to remove, oh, there you go, like that, and we're going to remove the washer from Luke's hot end fix as the next step. So just go ahead and put it in there. It should lock in, and you should be able to get the washer out just like that. And go ahead and set it off to the side. Then what you want to do is get the little bit bigger uh, Allen wrench and go ahead and push your PTFE tube down through the bottom and it should fall right out just like that. The next thing you want to do is take a piece of PTFE tube. You can use the stock one or I had a spare one and go ahead and just clean the throat out uh, the whole pathway. I like to do it about three times and that just gets everything uh, that could be in there out. Remember, everything is still hot, so be careful. All right, so everything be has been heated up for a while, and you can see the filament that I saw earlier is nice and liquidy. So we're going to want to clean that up next, uh, but I just wanted to point out how soft it is now. So cleanup should be pretty easy. Okay, so I used a toothpick and a cloth, and I got that cleaned up up there pretty good, as you can see there. Um, now let's take out the grub screw. So we're going to grab our Allen wrench and use the small side. I'm just going to try to get it loose and then I can show you uh, one handed on camera. Not easy. I'm going to use the small side here and there we go. I'm going to break that loose just like that and then I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Okay, the next thing you want to do is take out the screws in the bottom, but you want to hold the heat block tight again with your pliers. And then you could either use a Allen driver like I got here, or you can use the Allen wrench that came with the set and go ahead and remove those. All right, once you get both the screws out, you want to support it with your pliers and then go ahead, go ahead and slide it down and out. Be careful, it is very hot. As you can see in there, there's a little bit of filament in the threads and we're gonna need... Okay, once you're supporting this, you're gonna to need to take the throat out of the heat block. To do this, you'll need two sets of pliers, one to hold on and one to turn the throat out. I can't do that because I only have one arm. My left arm is hurt right now, so I'm going to have my wife help, and I will be right back. 
Okay, now that we got the throat broke loose, I just wanted to point out, this right here is the filament that's been coming up through the threads and allowing it to leak on the top of the heat block. That's what we need to get out and we need to clean that up. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and finish unscrewing the throat and get it cleaned up. Okay, as you can see, the filament has really built up on the threads of the throat. What we're gonna do is go ahead and grab our wire brush and because the throat is still warm, it's not too bad to do, but we're gonna scrub those threads clean as best we can. Once you get that done, if you look, the threads inside the heat block are also filled with, fi with filament that's melted. So we're going to try to get that out as best we can too with a smaller little brush or some toothpicks or anything we can find. So once we got that uh, as good as we can, um, what we're going to go ahead and do now is put in the nozzle. So I got a new nozzle because I had some laying around and we're just going to install it now. Okay, I got the nozzle tightened in. And what I did was I went ahead and tightened it all the way in and then backed it out one and a half turns. Okay, next what we're going to do is go ahead and install our throat back into the heat block. Always support the heat block with a pliers like this. And then I screwed it in hand tight and I'm going to have my wife tighten it all the way with another set of pliers. Okay, so once your throat is tight into the heat block, we take your heat block and simply insert the throat all the way up just like that so once you have everything pushed up in there uh, we want to make sure we're level as well mine was off so I de definitely had to level it a little bit to make it uh, straight with the bed then you want to go ahead and adjust it if you need to mine was not all the way up so there we go we're gonna push it all the way up in there and make sure it stays there we go and now we're straight and level with the bed. Then what we want to do is take our Allen wrench and the screws that came with the um, heat block. And we're just going to go ahead and get them in there and set them. So once you get those tight, go ahead and take your grub screw. And we're going to install that uh, right back in the front. So once the grub screws in, you go. You want to tighten the nozzle back up. So I like my six millimeter socket here, and you want to hold the block with a, a pliers, and go ahead and tighten that all the way up tight. So the next thing I want to do once I got everything tightened on the bottom is go back to the top and install my hot end fix found in the first video I did. So go ahead and install insert the uh, PTFE tube that's cut, push it down in there, then grab the washer and get the washer put in there like this. There we go. And I'm going to finish it from here. So as you can see, I got everything put back together. The fans are on, the bullseye duct, everything's ready to go. I even got my PTFE tube fix done. Uh, the hot end fix, as you can find in video one, the PTFE tubes are tight, and we are ready to print. At this point, you can see we're printing now. I'm printing the test cube from the E-Steps and Flow video that we just did. I've uh, got the red filament still, and I'm going to re-measure the walls of the cube and make sure we're good after this fix. I'm sure the flow changed a little. So as you can see, the one on the left was the old one, and the one on the right was the new one I printed. It looks much better. This fix really helped. I found my nozzle was loose and some other things as I went through it, but just a good clean out really helped. Uh, I was a little nervous to take everything apart, but all in all, it's really not that bad, and it really doesn't take that long to do if you do it and you do it right. You guys have a great day, and keep printing. Please like the video. Click subscribe if you want to see more, and click on the little bell if you want to be notified when the next great videos come out.